mirror, mirror, on that wall, which level is the best of them all? That is correct, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to rank Banjo-Kazooie. I am fresh off the hot oven of playing through this game for the very first time. My impressions of this game are fresh, new, and fresh. So let's find out today which is number one. This is Banjo-Kazooie, all levels ranked. So to start, what's the rubric here? What are we talking? Is this based off of soundtracks, enemy design? This is honestly just based off of Gun to My Head. Which one do I like the most for one reason or another? And as always, let's start at the bottom. Number nine. Clanker's Cavern. It's the water level. What else do I need to say? Next. Number eight. Rusty Bucket Bay. It's the second water level. What else do I need to see next? Okay, no, I actually do want to talk about Rusty Bucket Bay here because this was initially while playing through it, one of my more favorites. But as the bar got higher to progress to the next set of levels and you needed to collect more and more notes, I started to just have a dislike for this level because the notes are pretty spread out. It's not like you'll find 10, 15 notes in areas, you'll find three notes. Three notes here, three notes there, go around the map, go into ship levels, three notes here. And of course, if you're down in the engine room with propellers, if you fall off the map, you don't just go outside, like it doesn't spawn you outside, that's insta-death. And in this game, insta-death means reset everything. But really, there is a lot I like to this level, most notably the entire ship area banging the windows off and jumping inside and, and going inside these little tubes to find out to find these little secretive spots inside the ship is pretty damn cool. Number seven, click cluck wood. To be honest, this has a good idea behind it. It's the idea of having one level, which is pretty much a giant tree set between four seasons. Really great idea, but a little ambitious. Concerning everything you have to collect is spread about four different levels. Not only that, you pretty much play through the same level four times. Yes, there are some differences, especially with the tree leaves, but really that's it. Number six, Mad Monster Mansion. This is the part of the list where this and everything above this is pretty much like elite level. The only thing drawing this back from higher spots is that it's a bit scattered in its design. It's little pockets of areas and I'm more of a fan of this big area and little things in it. But overall, this, this level does have one of my favorite jiggies to get, as it is the silent walking jiggy where you cannot walk on the ground without waking up the ghost. So you have to go through the chimney and jump on the chairs to get the jiggy. Number five, Gobi's Valley. For some reason, I've always liked desert areas in games, most notably in DK64, but Gobi's Valley is exactly what I want out of levels. Huge level, little pyramids and big pyramids with stuff to do inside them. And overall, this has some great memorable stuff. Using the super speed to run up the pyramid in time, or just getting the camel to go all the way down to the tree to transfer the water, this has some memorable stuff in it for me. Number four, Bubble Gloop Swamp. 
Bubble Gloop Swamp has a great design for me. It pretty much starts and you have like this way, left, and right. This has the jump on the turtle's feet and go inside his mouth to do a memory challenge. Turn into a crocodile and go into another crocodile to do a food eating competition. As much as I've always hated the floor will damage you type areas, this doesn't really bother me that much because there's so much good in Bubble Gloop Swamp. Number 3, Freezeezy Park. To be honest, I totally thought this would be like bottom 3 for me, but the more I played this level, uh, the more I liked it. Totally not biased because Christmas is definitely the number one holiday of all time for me, but that's probably a factor. Racing the polar bear, uh, using Mumble's magic to turn into a walrus, finding presents to give to the polar bear's kids to get a jiggy, turning on the Christmas tree. This level has it all, and one of my biggest things is this level isn't ginormous like some of the later levels were in Banjo-Kazooie. Ginormous being a very loose term for me. But it's not like everything was scattered out, because there was multiple areas to fly. So even if something was on the other side of the map, you could just fly there. So overall, Freeze Easy Park gets a solid number three spot. Number two, Mumbo's Mountain. For being the first level in the game, this was quite memorable for me. It was my first taste of real banjo kazooie gameplay, and it did not disappoint. Although some of the jiggies in this level are hilariously easy to get, which I get it's the first level, but there's still some cool stuff. It has my favorite mumbo transformation of the ant. You have the monkey, which is completely DK64 sound effects that are later going to be ported into DK64. <laughs> And overall, because this is the first and smallest level, this was just the easiest to 100% and is just one of my favorite levels. Number one. Treasure Trove Cove. You know, from the first two minutes I spent in this level, I already knew this was my favorite. Before I even knew about the high bar, how high the bar was to get into next levels and stuff, I damn near 100% of this level without knowing any of that. I wanted to do everything in this level. This level has it all. I love the enemy types. I love the beach setting, the climbable palm trees. You learn a lot of good abilities in this game, like the super jump, the fly. You get to meet the pirate hippo whose dialogue is just burping and that never fails to make me laugh in a childish way. <laughs> You have the sharks out in the water, which that soundtrack and the, the way it talks with the jaws like chomping is still stuck in my mind. You have the very top of the level, which is the lighthouse. That's memorable for me because the soundtrack just disappears and you're left with like seagulls and stuff. <laughs> But overall, five minutes into Treasure Trove Cove, I knew it was going to be number one. And at the end of Ben Kazooie, looking at my list, it is still number one. So that's it. To all nine levels of Banjo Kazooie rank. Banjo Tui is on my list. I'm probably going to do ranking for that. I probably could do more rankings for this, honestly. But that will be later. But for now, I'm your host, Sailor Planet Entertainment, and I hope you this video. Peace out. What is up? I know what you're thinking. You're only here for the bonus Easter egg soundtrack I put in at the end of every video. But did you also know I have a donation page under Buy Me A Coffee? Donate whatever you want to my channel and I'll put half of that back to an environmental charity. So that's that. 
Enjoy the music. Peace out.